Hey, welcome back. Got a threefer for you today. I'm going to be putting the some of my favorite blended bourbons against each other uh, to give you a review of them. I, I think I, I believe I've reviewed each one of these on their own, but we're going to be doing them side by side right after this. All right, welcome back. Here we have, in no particular order, by the way, uh, Old Elk, which says a blended straight bourbon whiskey. Uh, we have Breckenridge, which does some things with some snow melt waters, but it also says that it is a blend of um, bourbon whiskeys. And we have Barrel uh, that says uh, we hand selected and married these bourbon barrels uh, from our inventory, uh, so this is also a, a blended bourbon. Now, price point, similar, outrageous, okay? I will just say that, and every time I see barrel, I, I, I see it creep up more and more and more. Uh, this bottle was a gift, and if I told you who it was from, you probably wouldn't believe me anyway, so I won't even mention the name, but uh, this is upwards, it's, get, it's creeping up around 100 bucks a a bottle uh, for the 750 milliliter. These are around 50-ish, I don't know. I don't remember, uh, one may be 48, one may be 55, I don't remember, uh, somewhere along in there. But again, no particular order on these. Uh, you know, I don't really remember, I remember liking each one of these individually. So let's put them against each other. That's a good cork pop on the old elk. So I'm going to keep these separated. I'm going to pour a little bit in here and it's not going to be a lot because I'm going to be drinking three different ones here. So I'm going to put a little there. Oh, that was nice. All right. Just a little snip in there. And then the barrel. Now I'm putting barrel in the in the uh, bourbon bounty logoed glass, but that's no indication of um, which one I think is better. And I did pour a little more of it uh, than the others, but again, that was because I don't know I tilted it more. So uh, let's keep these separated. I'm going to get some air in this one, and we're going to nose it. So this is the old elk, um, and this is. Bottled and distilled by Old Elk Distillery, uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. All right. So let me go ahead and get a nose on this. Okay, some typical bourbon notes. Got the vanilla, the fruits, you know, the apple mostly. Maybe a little cherry in there with it. Um, not getting a lot of spice on the nose, but uh, let's let the legs settle and we will look at this one. So this is Breckenridge, and this is uh, Colorado as well, I do believe. Well, Breckenridge, Colorado, so. All right, a little softer on the nose. Yeah, it's got, um, not, not as punchy in the vanilla. Still some fruits in there uh, coming out, uh, pear, maybe apple. I'm not getting that cherry kick, but I am getting maybe slightly a little woodier note, maybe a little peppery note on the on the nose. Let's let those legs settle a little. Now barrel, the overpriced barrel. All right, let's see what we get here. Definitely the softest of the three. A little vanilla coming out in that really soft on the fruit. Yeah, maybe a, a little different fruit in there. Uh, maybe some apricot -y type aromas coming off of it. Uh, but with that, uh, let's go on ahead. Uh, you know what? I'm going to, since I poured more in it, I'm going to go on ahead and get that initial kick out of the way. Mm. 
Not going to give two. <clears throat> excuse me. Swallow before you talk. <coughs> Don't do it while you're, while, while you're still in the process of, or it'll hit your windpipe. All right, so I'm not going to give too many notes off that first one. The palate is similar to the nose, uh, but again, not too many notes. So uh, we're going to have to do another magic of video production right now. And just like that, I have my water. I always forget to get, get my little bottle of water uh, when I'm doing more than one bourbon. I like to cleanse the palate. I don't want to any one of them to influence the other ones uh, in any way. Well, a little, but it's always going to be there. But I don't want one to have an unfair advantage. So let's go down here now that I have that initial sip out of the way and I've coated the tongue really well. Let's try the old elk. Again, this is the punchier one. Um, it hits you a little bit harder uh, on the nose with the vanilla and the apple. Get that forced all around. A lot softer on the palate, a lot softer that, than the nose. Um, I'm getting some of the woody notes in there uh, it's not as much of a vanilla bomb on the, on the palate as it is on the nose. Uh, but I am picking up some of those fruits in there. Uh, not creamy or caramel, uh, more to the spicy side. I know I said I picked up a, a little bit of that spice on the nose. Um, a little bit on the finish there, a little bit, a little bit of spice. All right. So let's do the Breckenridge and try to see what the difference is there. I know I haven't talked much about the legs on these. None of them are, are particularly uh, super impressive. I'm getting a lot of thin uh, trails down the glass. Mm, yeah. All right, so following Old Elk with Breckenridge, this one reminds me more, if you've had Duke uh, bourbon, it's a, I call it a fruit bomb. This is a lot fruitier uh, than, than Old Elk. Uh, again, not so much the, the vanilla and caramels, but into the fruits, uh, not as spicy as Old Elk, which, you know, it depends on your preference, which one you're gonna like more. Uh, some may like it a little, little uh, spicier, peppery, uh, uh, woodier uh, on the palate and, and the finish. Uh, this one's a little sweeter and a little fruitier. Um, getting some of those, uh, a darker fruit too, like a cherries and things like that in it. A little water on the mustache. I don't want to water my bourbon down. All right, with barrel, mm, I can tell you for right now, just trying these back to back to back, my favorite, these two are better than barrel. I I'll tell you that just straight up. Um, that has more of a, I don't know, it's a, it's a little bit of a bitter to it. Um, like maybe the tannins uh, in the wood came out a little too much, maybe a little musky, uh, aftertaste on it on the finish. Um, I haven't had it that long. And of course, bourbon doesn't go bad in the bottle. But And, and, and again, you have to look at this is batch 17, bottle 2558. Uh, this is aged 10 years, four months, um, 112.5 proof. So a little higher proof. I believe these are on the lower end. Uh, this is only 88 proof. And to get a peppery punch out of an 88 proof, I think that's pretty darn good. Uh, this one's 43. So again, uh, you're down there at the 80, this is 86 proof actually. So these are closer in proof. I usually like the higher proof bourbons more, but not in this case. Um, now you give me Booker's or, you know, uh, another barrel proof that's like, I hate to say real bourbon. I mean, all these are, but they're blends. 
But uh, th these, uh, I think bourbons all have their place. Uh, I think a good barrel proof uh, cast strength bourbon uh, that is just a, a Kentucky straight bourbon from a single barrel uh, bottle the way it was, was distilled and, and aged, I think makes a really good pre-dinner drink, especially if you're going to eat something like steak, uh, you know, or ribs or something like that. Mm. I think these are more for like a, like an afternoon sipper, you know, type thing that you're just hanging out, especially these lower proofs. Maybe uh, you have a, a, a snifter before the party starts. You know, they're not super high alcohol content, but it kind of kicks the night off. Uh, barrel, it kind of draws a line in between. And I don't know, uh, it, it certainly, there's people that like it and there's people, it has its place. For me, I don't I don't want to spend that much money on this. I will spend money on bourbon, but it better be like knock my socks off. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't do that. I if I were going to collect, I, I I would do like these, which I do, and that's basically what I do. But I'm here to bring you all different kinds, so you know I'm going to splurge every once in a while and buy the more expensive stuff. Like I said, that was a gift from someone, but I have spent over a hundred dollars, well over. Mm. Oh wow, I do like that peppery. I, I do like that a uh, little that that oaky on the sides that it brings. It just makes me feel like uh, it's it's a little more rustic of a bourbon. I think this is like ski lodge here. I, I, well, let me let me not influence the too much. Yeah, let me let me let me see. If I can peg a, a good, uh, again, none of the legs are, are super impressive. This one probably has better legs on it. Uh, yeah, when I get to looking at it. Yeah, I think Breckenridge has stronger. That's running it's about the same. These two are about the same. This one's pretty thin. Mm. Yeah, this one, I think, uh, from the people like to say smooth, I think this one is probably the smoothest uh, of them. And what that really means is just softer. Uh, there's no singe. It's just softer on the palate. Uh, no burn on the on the follow, but on the swallow. But there's also hardly any finish behind this. I mean, it's pretty short. Now, I am swigging water pretty regularly between these, so I'm washing that finish away. Um, but, but it is hitting there. Old Elk, much longer. Uh, much more pronounced on the finish because of those uh, woody peppery notes. So with that, um, there you have the three against each other. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap this up. But before I do, I'm going to have one more little snip of it. I, that, I think this one, that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one of the three, I like Old Elk. Now, this one, really close second. This one is actually a good third, but for the money, it's it's a far third, I think, uh, in my opinion. Again, just my opinion. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I hope I brought you some good information. As always, please like and subscribe. Hit that bell down there for notifications, and I promise I'll keep bringing you these videos.